The Audi Q8 is one of those large coupe style SUVs, part of a genre pioneered by BMW a decade ago with their X6 and subsequently copied by Mercedes. Audi's considered solution for fashion orientated folk browsing in this segment is Q7 based and very Vorsprung de Technik, especially in this updated form. In this century's second decade, the Volkswagen Group's MLB Evo platform spawned lots of luxury SUVs. First, we had the Audi Q7, then the Bentley Bentayga, the Porsche Cayenne, the Volkswagen Touareg, and the Lamborghini Urus. Finally, in 2018, we came back full circle to another Audi, a derivative of the Q7, this swoopier Q8, first launched in 2018. The Q8 was Audi's entry into the large sector SUV coupe market, started in the noughties by the BMW X6, which was then followed by the Mercedes GLE Coupe. The latest version of both of those two rivals have received facelifts in recent years, so the Q8 has had one too. A car that these days sells alongside a completely separate EV model, the unrelated Q8 e-tron. Here though, we're looking at the combustion Q8 which continues to roll off the VW Group's Slovakian Bratislava production line alongside the Q7, the KN and the Touareg and shares the same wheelbase and cabin width as its large Audi stablemate. The driveway demeanour though is very different here, the emphasis on fashion rather than family. It's pointless asking whether we really need this kind of car. People want them, Audi's made one. Is it any good? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. As we said when we first tried this Q8 back in 2018, it's easy to get confused about the kind of car this is. In principle, it's one of those BMW X6-like large luxury SUV coupe models that newly moneyed folk seem to like so much these days, which you'd think would make it sporty to drive, or at least as sporty as a 2.2-ton SUV is ever going to be. Actually, as you discover pretty quickly after taking the wheel, the intended emphasis here is far more on comfort and luxury than it is on live handling, which is why Audi uses the full-length version of the Volkswagen Group's MLB Evo architecture for this car, rather than the slightly shorter, more agile design of this chassis fitted to a rival Porsche Cayenne. As you'd expect, it's the same platform as features in the Q7, though here the Ingolstadt engineers have fitted it out with shorter springs and larger wheels, which is unfortunate because both detract from the supple ride that ought to have been this Q8's calling card. Fitted out as it is with standard air springs for the aluminium five-link front and rear suspension. To be frank, we've tried passively suspended luxury segment SUVs that have handled poor surfaces better. We'd hope that the brand might have addressed this issue as part of this facelift, but as previously, unless you stretch to the six-figure sums required for the fastest SQ8 and RS Q8 versions, the drive dynamics of the mainstream models fall into that no-man's land between comfort and sportiness. Yes, as before, at speed through the turns, you get excellent traction and decent body control, but this Audi is still much happier when you're not throwing it about. Given that the brand is no longer developing combustion engines, it's no surprise to find that there are no changes to the two conventional power plants that lie beneath the bonnet of this revised Q8. They're both 3-litre V6s, a 55 TFSI petrol unit with 340 PS and the 50 TDI diesel with 286 PS that we're trying here. As before, both are fitted with the brand's 48-volt mild hybrid system with its belt-driven starter motor and drive via an 8-speed Tiptronic Auto. Plus, of course, this standard Quattro four-wheel drive which divides torque front to rear in a 40-60 split. When required, it transfers the majority of power to the axle with a better traction. 
in defiance of the current zeitgeist, it's this test car's diesel unit that continues as the best-selling power plant, and driving it, you can see why. You waft along on a hefty 600 newton meters wave of pulling power, which thrusts this substantial slab of Ingolstadt real estate to 62 miles an hour in just 6.1 seconds, only half a second slower than the more powerful petrol model en route to 150 miles an hour. As the scenery flashes by, you'll like the commanding driving position. Not so good is the slight reluctance the ZF 8-speed auto gearbox has to kick down as quickly as you'd like for rapid overtakes. That won't be quite so much of an issue if you opt instead for the only mainstream engine that has been changed as part of this model update, the plug-in hybrid petrol powertrain that features with the 55 TFSIE. Its fundamentals haven't changed, it's still based around the 3-litre TFSI petrol unit I just mentioned, but Audi's worked on the integral electric motor and the result is a total output now pitched at 394 PS, accompanied by the same 600 newton meter torque figure that you get in this diesel. That means 62 miles an hour is dispatched in just 5.7 seconds on the way to an electronically limited top speed of 149 miles an hour. As with most PHEVs, there are two main system drive modes, hybrid, engine and battery together, or a full EV setting plus a hold option that allows you to save battery power until later in your trip when you might need it. The big changes, though, lie with the PHEV model's increase in drive battery size from 17.9 to 25.9 kilowatt hours, which has boosted the EV range from a meagre 28 miles to a much more acceptable 51 mile figure. You might even be able to stretch that figure a little by using the car's charge mode, which no longer uses the petrol engine to charge the battery, as the previous model did rather inefficiently. Instead, an improved energy recuperation system alone is used, recharging the battery back as high as 75% from energy reclaimed either at a cruise, when up to 25 kilowatts of power can be recovered, or when braking, when the electric motor acts as a generator and slows the car by up to 0.3 G. So much retardation, in fact, that to slow a Q855 TFSIE, you'll hardly ever need to use the actual brake pedal. At the other end of the Q8 efficiency spectrum is the 4-litre V8 used by the sporting SQ8 and RS Q8 models we mentioned earlier, a sonorous unit whose production life must now be limited given its smoky output and relative thirst. It develops 507 PS in the SQ7 with a prodigious 770 newton meters of torque, enough to see 62 mile an hour reached in just 4.1 seconds. The RS Q8, which we've covered in a separate review, improves output to a heady 600 PS with 800 newton meters of torque, enhancing the 62 mile an hour sprint figure to 3.8 seconds. Both these four litre models include the all wheel steering system that's also fitted with top Vorsprung trim on any three litre Q8. Plus these two top sporting variants feature S specific adaptive air suspension Select top Vorsprung trim on an SQ7 or choose any RS Q8 and you also get two driver focused dynamic features we'd like to have seen offered as options on a more accessible 3 litre Q8, a sport differential which shifts torque across the rear axle through quick corners and electromechanical active roll stabilisation which reduces curve lean and also body movement on uneven roads. As we suggested earlier, without this kind of tech, an ordinary Q8 like the one we're trying here will only just about tolerate being hustled about, even if you select the most eager of the provided drive modes, dynamic. The other tarmac orientated ones are efficiency and comfort, plus there's auto if you can't make up your mind, and individual if you want to set your own parameters. As well as changing throttle response and the adaptive air sport suspension, these settings are supposed to affect the feedback you get from the progressive steering rack. Though, as usual, with big Audis, that's always pretty vague. Audi reckons that owners like it like that, and for this revised model, has lightened it further for ease of use at manoeuvring speeds. 
The other two provided drive select settings are for something a typical Q8 owner will almost never do, journey away from a paved surface. There's all-road for light tracks and off-road for muddier surfaces. Both automatically raise the air suspension, something you can also do via the main drive select menu screen and focus all of the car's electronic systems for off-road use, including hill descent control when needed and optimising the four-wheel drive torque split. This is the kind of scenario in which the car's relatively high ride height would certainly come in useful. It's 220 millimetres in standard form, but if required, the adaptive air suspension can raise the car as much as 254 millimetres off the deck. This is the kind of stat that might be boasted by an SUV much more seriously orientated at off-piste travel than this one. And it's built upon by that standard hill descent control system, which provides automatic braking input to ease you down steep slopes with an incline of more than 6%, during which the car will maintain a constant speed limited at just under 19 miles an hour. You'll be able to monitor gradient levels via a tilt angle indicator on the center dash screen. Capability, of course, which will be totally irrelevant for 99.9% .9 of Q8 customers, unless perhaps they happen to be towing, in which case this car's impressive 3,500 kilogram braked towing capability might be an ownership draw. Embellishable with a clever trailer assist system that via a tow hitch camera helps you to more easily park whatever you're towing. At last then, a clear reason why you might choose a Q8 rather than one of its direct segment rivals. Big combustion Audi SUVs like this one will soon be no more. But for now at least, this one might still charm you. When we first tried this Q8 back in 2018, we felt that it had made design in the fashionable segment for sportily styled large luxury SUVs a little more credible. The models that originated this class of car, the BMW X6 and the subsequent Mercedes GLE Coupe, certainly had street side presence, but they were very obviously merely coupe versions of their conventional large SUV showroom stablemates. In the same way, this Q8 could have been merely a swept-back Q7. Instead, designer Mark Lichte and his team delivered something a little different, a fusion of elegant four-door luxury coupe with large SUV and a car that had very much its own look and still does in this improved form. As before, Audi's understandably keen to point out the differences between this Q8 and the more conservative, family-oriented Q7 model it's mechanically based upon. Its coupe-style roofline makes it appear much lower than that sister model, and it's 66 millimetres shorter and 27 millimetres wider. Plus, there's a shorter rear overhang and a mighty set of wheels, which now vary between 21 and 23 inches in size. Thanks to the frameless doors, the coupe-type roofline stretches low across the vehicle body visually, ending in a long roof spoiler. The roofline arches slightly towards the flat, sloping, strong D-pillars, which are supported by wide, muscular contours. And the B-pillar now bears the model and derivative. As for the main changes made to this revised model, well, as you'd expect from a facelift, most of them are at the front, a restyled version of the usual Audi single frame front grille, which now has an octagon design with vertical inlays. If you avoid base S-line trim, it'll be finished as here in high gloss black with Audi's latest two dimensional ring logo in dark gray. Other changes made as part of this update include now more prominent air intakes neatly integrated into the lower section of the front bumper and the matrix LED headlamps which can be ordered with optional HD matrix beams now have a revised daytime running light signature. Relieved of the need to accommodate a third seating row as it must in the Q7, the rear end is angled and aerodynamic. 
It's characterised, perhaps most notably, by this LED light strip, which together with black high-gloss trim and integrated Audi rings, links the revised dual-like digital rear lights across the entire width of the car. These come in digital OLED form at the very top of the range, where they incorporate a clever proximity indication feature that works in tandem with the assistance systems, specifically when vehicles from behind come within two meters of a stationary OLED light-equipped Q8, the control units trigger the activation of all the digital lamp segments. With all variants of this car, revised tailpipes are built into this lower diffuser, which, like the door surrounds and the underside guard, is now finished in contrasting colors to designate the various trim levels. As usual, though, what's more important is the stuff you can't see, a body based around multi-material Audi space frame steel and aluminium construction and bolted to the full length version of the stiff and strong MLB Evo chassis that all Volkswagen Group brands use for their large SUVs. As you walk towards the car and unlock it, your Q8 will welcome you at night with a little light show. Time to take a look inside. Apart from a few trimming and media updates, which we'll brief you on in a moment, Ingolstadt hasn't seen the need to make any changes in here with this updated model. So as before, this so-called luxury lounge design is all very Audi and not at all cockpit light as it would be in the other large coupe SUV model based on this car's MLB Evo platform, the Porsche KN Coupe. You're going to need to like screens because this gloss black panelled layout incorporates no fewer than three of them. The two you'll notice first powering up as soon as the doors opened and dominating the upper and lower parts of the shiny centre stack. In an attempt to deliver the required splash of luxury needed for a car of this status, the designers have fashioned this backlit aluminium central strip which flows the width of the dash and curves under the upper MMI screen. But unless you take up the extra cost opportunity of trimming this whole centre console area with bespoke inlays, Audi's added attractive grey ash and matte carbon twill options for this revised model, it's all a little overshadowed by the overriding emphasis on high-gloss black surfacing. To properly lift the sophisticated but slightly clinical atmosphere, you'll need to spend significantly on extras like the extended LED interior lighting pack and a full leather pack that coats the dash in lovely stitch leather. Or get the priciest top Vorsprung trimmed variant that includes both these things. We said there were three screens. The third one is found in the instrument binnacle, the now familiar 12.3 inch configurable virtual cockpit display that the brand fits right across its model range. Here it works as usual with two selectable layouts, a classical view that prioritizes a couple of prominent dials separated by an information screen and an infotainment road, which shrinks the pair of gauges to allow more central space for various data readouts or a full width navigation setup. You view all of this information through a grippy three-spoke stitched steering wheel and are seated on supportive sports seats trimmed in leather and Alcantara which feature heating, electrical adjustment and lumbar support. Many buyers though will want to upgrade to the optional quilted super sports chairs upholstered in softer Valcona leather. We've no issues with any of this but as we said when we first tried this car we're not quite so sure about the fundamental concept behind the two MMI touch response centre stack monitors mentioned earlier, mainly because they rely almost entirely on screen touch and voice control. The rotary controller by the gear stick that you get in, say, a rival BMW X6 makes it much easier to access particular infotainment screen functions without taking your eyes away from the road. To be fair, this Q8's twin screen setup does work a little better than the similar one found on larger Range Rovers. First, because here, the lower display deals primarily with climate control and comfort functions. And second, because the whole system functions more effectively with haptic feedback, which sees the touchscreen surface emit a tactile and acoustic signal when a function is pressed. You've got to press pretty firmly, though, a bit like you would if you were using a touchpad on a laptop computer, which, as already suggested, isn't ideal if you want quick access to something without looking at it. 
The 10.1 inch upper display has only been lightly tweaked as part of this model update. There's a wider range of apps. You can now use Spotify or Amazon Music. And if you swipe left from the familiar MMI tiled home display, there's now another alternative home screen divided into customizable widgets with an Alexa option. Both tiles and widgets can be moved around with the kind of drag and drop functionality you'll be used to from your smartphone. These deal with the most important radio, media, telephone and navigation functions. Plus, as you'd expect, there's the usual Audi smartphone interface compatible now wirelessly with the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. As before, there's a 10 gigabyte flash memory for music storage. And of course, you get a full suite of Audi Connect media connectivity features that, amongst other things, deliver online media streaming, a Google points of interest search function, a comprehensive Audi online traffic information system, plus news and weather feeds via a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the super fast LTE advanced mobile data network. Configurable favourites buttons help tailor the system to user preferences and allow up to seven drivers to store their preferred settings in individual user profiles and set up to 400 parameters. As we've said, the lower monitor, which is 8.6 inches in size, is reserved for more comfort-orientated features. Plus, its screen can also allow you to trace letters with your fingertip so that the search system can then give you selection options. Of course, you might expect that to be just another thing that would leave these shiny displays continually coated in grubby fingerprints. You might also worry about sunlight reflection. Audi's tried with partial success to mitigate both of these issues by use of an anti-fingerprint coating and a layer of anti-glare film, but to some extent, both problems still remain. What we do like about this setup is the way that the upper screen can be turned off to prevent nighttime distraction and its main functions summarised on the top part of the lower display. What else? Well, all-round vision from the driver's seat is excellent, even out of the back, despite the sloping rear roofline and the rather wide D-pillars. Just in case, though, all-round parking sensors and a rear-view camera come as standard. A head-up display is optional, but with the virtual cockpit setup fitted, we don't really think there's actually much need for it. On to storage space. One of the problems with having a two-screen centre console layout like this is that it leaves no space for the storage cubby that in most cars would sit just ahead of the gear stick and act as a handy place to stash your phone. Also lacking in this Q8 is a decently big storage bin between the seats. You do get one, but it's shallow and almost completely taken up by the standard wireless charging mat. This lidded box has a top that can slide forward and function as an armrest. And if you lift it up, you'll find that the area it conceals incorporates a couple of USB points, though because they're both USB-A ports, you may well need this slightly unsightly converter lead. What else? Well, the lidded cup holder compartment to the left of the gear lever incorporates a 12 volt socket. The door bins aren't especially big and there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses, but you do get a decently sized air conditioned glove box, refreshingly unencumbered by media equipment and a ticket clip on the driver's sun visor, along with a large concealed cubby by the driver's right knee. Let's move to the rear, accessed via this wide opening and frameless door. Given that the wheelbase of this five-seat model is basically the same as that of its seven-seat Q7 showroom stablemate, you'd think this Q8 would be pretty spacious in the rear. So let's see. Sure enough, there's ample leg and headroom for a couple of six-foot adults to stretch out in real comfort. It's certainly less claustrophobic back here than it is in a rival BMW X6, thanks to a surprisingly generous-sized side windows and a taller roof. The headspace you get is particularly impressive for a car claiming coupe credentials, and there's 750 millimetres of legroom, a bit more than you get in a rival Range Rover Sport, but a bit less than you'd find in a Porsche Cayenne, which is surprising because that model rides on a slightly shorter wheelbase. You can improve leg space even further on a Q8 by up to 100 millimetres by using this sliding rear seat base, part of a rear bench seat plus package that Audi no longer charges extra for with entry-level S-line trim. That also includes seat back angle adjustment. As before, rear seat heating, rear blinds, 
privacy glass and four zone air conditioning can all be added in to make life back here more pleasant. It's a bit rich given the asking price here though for Audi to ask extra for these USB ports. There's enough body width for a third adult to sit in the middle of this bench without having to breathe in first, but that person will have to sit on a rather uncomfortably raised section of foam and straddle this fairly hefty transmission tunnel. If there are only two of you and you're able to use this center armrest, you'll find the usual couple of cup holders, though no incorporated storage. Above the transmission tunnel, you get twin vents supplementing those built into the B pillars. A 12 volt port is provided and the now standard Audi music interface adds a couple of extra USBs back here too. There are netted seat back pockets, LED overhead reading lights and decently sized door pockets built into the beautifully finished Alcantara and aluminium trimmed door cards. We'll finish by taking a look out the back. Now the hatch opens electrically as standard, gesture control is optional, to reveal a 605 litre space. And to give you some class perspective, that's 25 litres more than a rival BMW X6, but 50 litres less than this car's other most direct competitor, the Mercedes GLE Coupe. Thanks to the rear bench seat plus package we just referred to, you can extend this Audi's capacity further by up to 75 litres. If you push the sliding bench right forward and place the seat back at a more upright angle. You might need to make use of this feature on a more regular basis if you opt for the 55 TFSIE plug-in hybrid model, because with that variant, you lose 100 litres of boot space thanks to the battery pack which is beneath the floor. In terms of getting stuff in, you'll be initially put off by the lofty height of this SUV's cargo deck, but help in this regard is at hand, courtesy of switches down here to the left that can significantly lower the air suspension. That makes it much easier to get in heavy boxes and bags, or possibly to allow your arthritic Labrador to hop aboard. In that case, you're going to need to option in the reversible rubber cargo mat and possibly also the extra cost removable net partition. There's a 12 volt socket here on the left, but alas, there's no significant storage space beneath the boot floor, despite Audi's refusal to supply any sort of spare wheel. This silver finished loading lit trimming plate will easily scratch too. A couple of netted storage areas are provided to the left and there are four chromed tie down points. If you specify the optional trailer pack, the buttons for the electrically extending tow bar can be found alongside those for the air suspension. Apparently two golf bags can easily fit in crosswise here. And if you've longer items like skis to accommodate, the fact that the rear bench has a 40-20-40 split means that you can push forward the center section without disturbing two rear seated passengers. If you need more room, completely flattening the rear bench frees up 1,755 litres of capacity, which easily beats the capacity of the two rival models we just mentioned. From the launch of this updated Q8 and at the time of this test in spring 2024, Audi wanted from just over £73,000 from you, with prices in the standard lineup ranging up to around £97,000 across the brand's familiar three trim levels, S-Line, Black Edition and Top Vorsprung. There's a choice of three engines, the 286 PS 50 TDI diesel we're trying here, or the 340 PS 55 TFSI petrol unit, which both cost about the same, or for a little more, the improved 394 PS 55 TFSI E petrol plug-in hybrid. Obviously, there's no full EV option because that market's covered off by an equivalent Q8 Sportback e-tron, priced at the time of this test from around £70,000. Back to this combustion model, which in faster, sporty SQ8 form was, as we filmed, priced from around £94,000 and is offered in black edition and Vorsprung forms. Beyond that, for those with little interest in the current green zeitgeist, there's only the top ultra-rapid RSQ8, which cost from around £113,000 at the time of this test and was being offered in standard carbon black and Vorsprung forms, with the latter pitched right up at £127,000. You've really got to want a Q8 
to pay that. Here, our emphasis is on the mainstream variants, which, as ever, primarily compete with two rival premium segment large coupe SUV models, the BMW X6 and the Mercedes GLE Coupe. Both of those competitors are newer designs, but they also cost significantly more. If we use the Q850 TDI model we're trying here as a pricing benchmark, then an equivalent BMW X6 xDrive 30D M Sport requires around £3,000 more than a base-trimmed S-Line diesel version of this Audi. You'd need a lot more for a Mercedes GLE Coupe, which is around £20,000 more expensive, partly because of the single, conventionally engined version offered in the UK only comes with a more powerful 367 horsepower 450D engine and a single upper-spec AMG Line Premium Plus trim level. We haven't yet mentioned the other potential class option, Porsche's KN Coupe, because that car can't any longer be ordered with a diesel engine. If you're comparing against a 340 PS petrol Q855 TFSI, an equivalent 353 PS base spec KN Coupe costs about the same. Having looked at those other options, you might well conclude, as we have, that there's nothing quite like a Q8 and if having come to that conclusion, you're moved to want to buy one, you'll be expecting Audi to have been generous with the standard equipment on offer. Nor should you be disappointed, even if budget restricts you to entry-level S-line trim. There's Quattro four-wheel drive, of course, in this case with a self-locking centre differential, and an eight-speed Tiptronic Auto gearbox. The Drive Select driving mode system, which here has an extra all-road setting, influences this transmission's shift timings, as well as throttle response, stability thresholds, steering feel and the ride quality of the standard adaptive air sport suspension. This can vary ride height by up to 90 millimetres and is a two-chamber setup. Audi HD Matrix LED headlights that adapt to traffic and road conditions also come as standard and feature unique animations as you lock or unlock the car. Other visual embellishments include big 21-inch wheels, signature LED daytime running lights, LED tail lamps with dynamic scrolling indicators and a sports styling pack that includes S-Line themed bumpers, side ventilation grills, side skirts and a roof spoiler, plus a platinum grey front spoiler lip and diffuser insert. There's also privacy glass, a power tailgate, power folding mirrors, auto headlamps and wipers, headlamp washers, an anti-theft alarm and Audi's Parking System Plus package of all-round parking sensors. Though unfortunately, no spare wheel. Inside you get Valcona leather trimmed front sport seats that are heated and power adjustable with a memory function and they place you perfectly in front of stainless steel pedals and a branded stitched steering wheel through which you view the fully digital customizable Audi virtual cockpit 12.3 inch instrument screen. Other standard cabin features include two zone automatic climate control, a rear view camera, cruise control with a speed limiter, an auto-dimming frameless rear-view mirror, illuminated branded door sill trims and matte brushed aluminium inlays. Plus, Audi now also includes the Rear Bench Seat Plus package, which allows you to slide and recline the back seat. You'd expect the infotainment technology to be cutting edge in a car of this one's pretensions, and sure enough, it is. You get Audi's top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch package, this Q8, borrowing the layout we first saw in the fourth generation A8 saloon with its two center stack screens, a 10.1 inch one up top and an 8.6 inch monitor just below it. Via the MMI setup, the display up top shows you an intelligent 3D navigation system that's able to take into account traffic congestion and previously driven routes brief you on filling stations and parking places on your route and include 3D graphic models of many European cities. The MMI package also includes voice recognition, a 10-speaker, 180-watt DAB sound system and the usual smartphone interface that hooks you up wirelessly with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone mirroring connectivity systems. The Audi Music interface offers simple pairing with your mobile devices using two USB ports, each with charge and data functions, plus the Audi phone box package can boost your handset signal and include a wireless charging mat to power it up. 
As an included part of the MMI system, there's a three-year subscription to the Audi Connect Media Connectivity Package, which works via an embedded SIM card that's permanently installed in the car and operates on a data flat rate, so you won't be stung with high roaming charges if you do a bit of intercontinental motoring. The setup comes with an LTE data transmission module that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and creates in your Q8 a Wi-Fi hotspot supporting the super-fast LTE advanced mobile data network. It also allows you to navigate with images from Google Earth, access a Google Points of Interest search function with voice control, and use a web radio setup with stations from around the world. Through the Connect system, you can access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter accounts, and it's possible to read, write, and send text messages and emails. The included online media streaming package gives access to millions of music tracks, and there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system that you uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Also built into Audi Connect is the car to x services system that the brand's developed in partnership with Daimler and BMW. That allows this Audi to often almost magically respond to future weather or traffic conditions or to somehow know what's around the next corner. Of course, it's not magic, the setup instead, driven by a mobile phone supported so called vehicle swarm exchange of information system that'll see your Q8 sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub, which then shares it with other drivers. What else? Well, you can take Audi Connect connectivity with you even when you're not with your Q8, thanks to the improved My Audi app. This transmits points of interest to the navigation system, streams music, and can transfer your calendar to the MMI infotainment screen. The app also allows you to seamlessly plan a route across multiple devices. So, for example, if you're going to a restaurant in an unfamiliar city and have to park a few streets away from the venue, navigation will continue with you on your smartphone as you complete the journey on foot. Finally, as usual, with vehicle apps of this sort, you can use it to get a vehicle status report and to lock or unlock the doors from wherever you are. The mainstream alternative trim level to S-Line is Black Edition, targeted at customers who want their Q8 to have a sportier look. This is delivered courtesy of a black styling package that gives a meaner looking Black finish for the front single frame grille, the bumpers, the window trims, the door mirrors and the exhausts. You also get 10 spoke Y style Audi sport wheels, bespoke Audi beam puddle lights, polished oak interior trim inlays and a flat bottomed sport steering wheel. Is it worth finding the extra cash for the more complete Vorsprung flagship level of trim? We're talking a big price jump of nearly £20,000 from Black Edition spec, but if you were thinking of heavily embellishing this car anyway, it might be one worth making because with this top variant, you'll find that virtually every significant option box will have been ticked for you, including a lot of extra drive assist and camera safety features that normally reside in extra cost packs, and we'll brief you on those later in this section. Inevitably, the Vorsprung embellishment includes a lot of luxury niceties, larger 22-inch wheels, a panoramic glass roof, super sport seats trimmed in softer Valcona leather, an Alcantara headlining, a powered steering column, an extra dynamic view option for the virtual cockpit instrument screen, and so on. There's some extra stuff of real substance too though. All wheel steering, for instance, with this setup, the rear wheels are able to turn in the opposite direction to the fronts at parking speeds to considerably improve maneuverability. While at over 37 miles an hour, turning those rear wheels in the same direction as the fronts to improve handling and corner turning. Another Vorsprung spec feature of note is the upgraded Bang & Olufsen premium 3D sound audio setup, which features 17 speakers, including 3D sound speakers, a 16-channel amplifier, and 730 watts of sound. With this top trim level, the front of the cabin will look significantly more premium thanks to the addition of a flat-bottom sports steering wheel and an extended leather pack, which adds a leather covering for the upper instrument panel, the door rails, the door armrests, and the centre console. 
The front seats are ventilated and gain a massage function, and the rear seat will be a nicer place to be thanks to side and rear window powered sun blinds, heated upholstery, and four zone climate control that allows those in the back to adjust fan speed and temperature. Other standard Vorsprung spec feature additions include a head-up display, advanced key, keyless entry, powered door closure that automatically latches doors left ajar, a powered front passenger seat, a double sun visor, an electric luggage compartment cover, and a multicoloured extended LED interior lighting pack that allows you to bathe the cabin in your choice of colours. To help with parking, there's a 360 degree surround view camera system and a park assist with parking A plus package that will steer you into spaces. For the outside, a Vorsprung Spec Q8 can be identified by carbon mirror housings and a much higher level of lighting. The headlights are upgraded to HD matrix status, which means they gain Audi laser light tech. And the rear combination lights are upgraded with Audi's digital OLED technology, which gives them signature illumination that can also be proactive, specifically when vehicles from behind come within two meters of a stationary OLED light equipped Q8. The control units trigger the activation of all the digital lamp segments. There's also a certain level of autonomous driving assistance, much of which comes from the adaptive cruise assist system that Vorsprung Spec Q8s get as standard. This setup works at any speed between rest and 152 miles an hour and can detect lane markings, structures next to the road, vehicles in adjacent lanes, and multiple vehicles ahead. And of course, will adjust your highway speed to suit surrounding traffic. It also works with an included predictive efficiency assistant package that can use navigation data to adjust your Q8's driving demeanor for extra comfort and efficiency, adjusting speed to suit road topography and activating things like highway coasting or engine braking. A whole network of electronic kit is needed to support this kind of capability. Up to five radar sensors, five cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors and a laser scanner. Much of it you also use for the extra high-tech safety features that also come as part of Vorsprung spec. And we'll get to those in a moment. Before we do, let's say a few words about options. And rather than paying the huge premium for the top Vorsprung level of trim we've been telling you about, most buyers will probably opt for a standard S-Line spec model and then add in those particular extra features they really want. Much of the Vorsprung spec stuff is, after all, available individually on the options list. The easiest way to spec up a more mainstream Q8 is with one of the extra cost packs your dealer will offer you. For around £3,000 more, there's the technology pack, which includes the Park Assist with Parking Aid Plus package we just mentioned, the Ambient Lighting Package Plus, a head-up display, and that desirable Bang & Olufsen 17-speaker sound system. All those features are also included in the Technology Pack Pro, which for around £6,000 additionally adds four-zone air conditioning, advanced key keyless entry, heat for the rear seats, USB charging in the rear, an electronic luggage compartment cover, remote park assist plus so you can park the car using your key fob, and the Audi PreSense basic system that prior to an impact will close windows and sunroof and brace the car to best survive it. If you're a tower, you might also want the trailer assist pack, which for £1,450 more gives you an electrically folding ball hitch and Audi's clever trailer assist system that's activated whenever reverse gear is engaged and helps you to park whatever you're towing. A bike rack can be added to the towing hitch as well. And as for other practical extras, well, to add to the usability of the cargo bay, there's a load area fixing kit, which gives you a fixing set for the rail system in the luggage compartment, complete with a telescopic pole and a fastening strap. There's also an optional removable net partition to separate the passenger and luggage areas. And we'd want the reversible cargo area floor mat, which has carpet on one side and rubber on the other. Ideal for muddy boots 
and muddy dogs. Plus, of course, you can add the roof bars that'll allow you to fit racks for a roof box, bikes, skis or snowboards. And finally, remember that unless you want your Q8 painted in solid pure white, you're going to have to need to pay Audi some more for a shade from its metallic colour range. We've got metallic satellite silver here. The brand has added three metallic new finishes for this revised model. Sakia Gold, Ascari Blue and Chili Red. And five new alloy wheel designs have also been introduced with sizes ranging from 21 to 23 inches. Enough with optional features, let's move on to look at safety. Now, before we get into all the electronic stuff, we ought to make the point that this car is fundamentally very safe thanks to its torsionally rigid body shell and structural front end. In a head-on collision, three stress planes in the nose section absorb the forces. Plus, there are Isofix child seat mountings, a tyre pressure warning light, and all the usual front side and curtain airbags too, with rear side bags available as an option. Should the worst happen and you have a crash that activates the airbags, a standard Audi Connect safety and service feature will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location. But of course, the primary purpose of modern safety technology is to avoid a collision in the first place, which is the task of a whole armory of electronic camera driven features. Over 40 of these have been developed for this Q8 and many of them are standard. As you'd expect in this day and age, there's an autonomous braking system included in that roster. Ingolstadt calls its setup Audi PreSense Front. And like other similar packages, this one scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive and will automatically brake the car to try and avoid them if you don't respond to warnings. There's also a lane departure warning setup that works between 37 and 152 miles an hour and issues a warning if you drift out of your lane on the highway before applying subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you ought to be. In addition, your Q8 will come with distance warning, which alerts you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front and rest recommendation, which also alerts you if drowsiness is detected in your driving reactions. There's an estimated drive status readout on the instrument screen, which rather cleverly shows what the system's camera thinks is your current level of fatigue. Plus, there's traffic sign recognition, which pictures speed signs that you pass and displays them on the virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen. For more of Audi's sophisticated camera safety and semi-autonomous driving tech features, you'll need to either upgrade to top Vorsprung spec, which has it all as standard, or on one of the mainstream variants like this one, pay extra for the optional city assist pack and tour pack options that your Audi center can offer you. So let's start with the City Assist Pack, which includes six main features. Side Assist works as a blind spot monitor, warning you on the move if you're about to dangerously pull out to overtake in the path of another vehicle. Cross Traffic Assist Front warns of dangerous cross traffic movements at junctions and can, if necessary, automatically apply the brakes, preventing an accident. Cross Traffic Assist Rear can warn you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. PreSense Rear warns you via a flashing light if you're about to be hit from behind so that you can try and take avoiding action. An exit warning stops a passenger door opening when the car is stationary and oncoming traffic is dangerously approaching. Finally, in a situation where you're driving but you've lost control and an accident impact is inevitable, there's the PreSense Basic system we mentioned earlier that will activate milliseconds just before the crash, tightening the seat belts and if necessary, closing windows and sunroof to give you a better chance of surviving it. PreSense Basic also features as one of the seven features bundled into the other key optional safety pack that a mainstream Q8 customer could specify, the Tour Pack. Here, as well as extra safety peace of mind, you additionally get a degree of driving autonomy tech included. 
We mentioned two of the key elements of this earlier when talking you through the Vorsprung model specification, namely adaptive cruise assist, which can control much of your Q8 driving functionality at cruising speeds, and Audi's predictive efficiency assistant, which uses navigation data to automatically optimise comfort and efficiency. Other tour pack inclusions include turn assist, which activates when you put on the indicators and will brake the car if you try and manoeuvre or pull out in front of another vehicle. In addition, you get a collision avoidance assistant, which will support your actions during an accident avoidance manoeuvre, providing extra steering torque and using the vehicle's sensors to calculate the optimum path of avoidance. Finally, as part of this pack, there's also an emergency assist element added to the standard lane departure warning system that's able to autonomously bring the car to a safe controlled stop if you don't respond to repeated warnings about drifting out of lane, as might be the case if, for example, you were suddenly taken ill at the wheel. Ultimately, however you specify this Q8, there are going to be a lot of safety systems to oversee, particularly if you've ticked a few options boxes. The car itself oversees all these features via an incorporated central driver assistance controller, which permanently calculates an image of the driving environment you're in, appropriately activating the different elements to meet different situations. But how do you monitor all of this as a driver? Well, Audi's tried to simplify that process here by providing a driver assist button at the bottom of the centre stack there to allow the selection of the kind of electronic security blanket you want. Basic includes only the most important items. Maximum gives you everything. An individual allows you to pick and choose the features you want activated. At the lowest driver assist level, Basic, there's that standard pre-sense front autonomous braking system and the lane departure warning system here embellished with that emergency assist feature because we've got that optional tour pack fitted. The top maximum driver assist setting adds in things like the distance warning and rest recommendation features we mentioned earlier. It's all very reassuring. One of the things that Audi's not quite so keen to talk about with this Q8 is weight. You might expect this car to be relatively light by the standards of weighty, large, luxury SUVs. After all, the company's space frame technology has been employed here, plus copious amounts of aluminium have been used to fashion the doors, the front wings, the tailgate, roof, rear wheel housings, and large parts of the floor. Despite all of this, though, the quoted curb weight for this typical 50 TDI diesel model is a hefty 2,160 kilograms. As a result of that, you'll need to manage your expectations in terms of the efficiency figures you're likely to get. Mindful of this, Audi has equipped all engines it uses for its current large size models with MHEV or mild hybrid electric vehicle technology made possible by a belt alternator starter, which is the nerve center of a clever 48 volt electrical system. In highway motoring at between 34 and 99 miles an hour, this enables the car to coast for up to 40 seconds with the engine switched off. At slower speeds, it provides for an increased energy recovery output of up to 12 kilowatts. And in traffic, it allows for an extended stop-start function that can work at up to 13 miles an hour. Audi claims that the combined impact of all of this equates to a saving of 0.7 litres of fuel every 100 kilometres or 62 miles, so it's a worthwhile, if rather slight, improvement. Let's get specific and give you the figures for the 50 TDI 3-litre diesel model we're trying here. In its mainstream trimmed guises, this can manage up to 34.9 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 213 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's the same as a much more powerful Mercedes GLE Coupe 450D can manage, but it's some way off the returns you get from this Audi's other most direct rival, the BMW X6 xDrive 30D, which manages up to 39.8 mpg and 187 grams per kilometer of CO2. In this diesel Q8, we've been achieving just under 30 mpg in regular use throughout this test, which would equate to a driving range from the 75-litre fuel tank of around 475 miles in normal motoring. 
get closer to the quoted fuel figure and that range would rise to around 660 miles. You wouldn't be far off that in the alternative petrol Q8, the 55 TFSI, which manages up to 25.4 mpg and up to 235 grams per kilometre, about the same as you get from an equivalent Porsche Cayenne Coupe. For completion, we'll give you the figures for the two top petrol performance Q8 models. The SQ8 returns up to 23 mpg and 289 grams per kilometre, while the RS Q8 can only manage up to 21.2 mpg and 307 grams per kilometre. All of which means that if you really want efficiency running cost returns in a combustion Q8, you'll need to turn to the pricier 55 TFSI E plug-in hybrid version. We were offered this variant in the pre-facelifted model, but that older model's little 17.9 kilowatt hour battery would only take the car a meagre 28 miles on EV power. As part of this update, the 55 TFSI E gets a much gutsier 25.9 kilowatt hour battery that almost doubles that EV range to 51 miles. So you could now realistically commute in a PHEV Q8 without troubling combustion power. For some, that might even make a Q855 TFSI E a realistic alternative to an all-electric Q8 e-tron. The plug-in hybrid battery charges up to 7.4 kilowatts and reaches 100% in approximately 3 hours and 45 minutes when charged at top power. Whatever your Q8 variant of choice, magazine tests have pointed out that across the board, the efficiency figures we've quoted can be difficult to achieve in day-to-day -day motoring. But then, that's not an issue exclusive to Audi. Much will depend on the driver, of course, hence the brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel do more when it comes to frugality. An efficiency assist segment of the center dash infotainment screen allows you to activate or deactivate some of the car's main frugality aids. Things like the intelligent coasting feature I mentioned earlier, which shuts the engine off entirely as you cruise between 30 and 100 miles an hour. Plus there's accelerator pedal feedback, which resists you pressing too hard on the throttle. You can also activate general economy tips and what Audi calls predictive messaging. There's also an energy consumers readout in the instrument cluster, showing you the effect that, say, the air conditioning is having on the car's energy usage. Beyond that, as usual with the company's models, there's an efficiency setting on the drive select vehicle dynamic system, which tweaks the air conditioning, gear shift timings, and throttle response for maximum frugality. If you choose to use the individual drive select mode that allows you to tailor your preferred settings, you'll find that efficient is one of three options you can choose for each criteria setting. The MMI navigation system on this car has been programmed around what Audi calls predictive and efficient driving, which means that it will adapt the drive demeanor of your Q8 based on things like speed limits and gradient changes. And if you've specified the optional tour pack on this car, you'll find that it could be even more proactively efficient, thanks to the predictive efficiency assist setup that comes as part of that pack's adaptive cruise assist system. Predictive efficiency assist really is very clever, constantly gathering navigation data, camera images and feedback from the built-in car to X message system that receives car swarm feedback from other similarly equipped vehicles. Using all this, the software can then contribute to a more economical driving style. For example, instructing you when to release the accelerator before entering a curve or behind a slower vehicle, for instance. Get onto the highway, and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. As for maintenance, well, servicing your Q8 should be no more taxing than is the case with one of the company's smaller cars. As usual, with Audi models, there's a choice of either a fixed or a flexible servicing regime. The choice between the two depending on the extent of your likely annual mileage. The fixed schedule is aimed at drivers covering fewer than 10,000 miles per year, 
That includes an oil change service every 9,000 miles or every year, plus an inspection service every 19,000 miles or every two years. If you cover more than 10,000 miles a year, the flexible service schedule will be more appropriate. This regime, including oil change and inspection services at variable intervals of up to every 19,000 miles or every two years. Whatever package you go for, you'll need to change the brake fluid after the first three years, then every two years thereafter. Overall, maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans you'll be offered at initial purchase, which can cover you up to a maximum of three years and include an oil service and a major service. You may also be interested to know that this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system app, as well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance. This feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. Alternatively, you could sign up for Audi Service Request, which uses the onboard Wi-Fi to enable your car to communicate with the dealer. As your Q8 nears the time when work will be needed, the diagnostics alert your nominated local Audi centre will then contact you to book in a convenient time. Another neat service your dealer can offer you is the so-called Audi Cam system. Here, technicians carrying out workshop inspections on your Q8 can focus a handheld Audi Cam camera on specific problems accompanying the image with a verbal diagnosis to create footage that can be sent to your computer or smartphone. That way, you'll know precisely what work you're authorising on your car. What else? Well, all versions of the Q8 cost £570 a year in VED road tax for years two to five of ownership and all sit in the highest possible benefiting kind taxation bracket. On to residuals. A typical Q850 TDI S-Line model would, after three years and 60,000 miles, be worth 46.7% of its original value, though you'd lose a bit of that with top-spec Vorsprung trim. Either way, that's way above the figure quoted for a rival BMW X6 xDrive 30D, just 35.8%. That kind of difference could cost you a lot in overall ownership terms. And we'll finish by covering the warranty. All cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in this period, Audi rather meanly restrict you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend the cover to either four or five years and 75,000 or 95,000 miles respectively. As for insurance groupings, well, all Q8s are rated at a top of the shop Group 50, which seems unreasonable when a mechanically identical Q7 rates from Group 44. The eighth dimension has been an important one for Audi. At the end of the last century, the A8 brought a new Vorsprung Dirk Technique feel to the boardroom luxury saloon sector. Then in 2006, the introduction of the R8 proved that the brand could build a credible super sports car too. This Q8 hasn't turned out to be quite as groundbreaking, but especially in this revised form, it remains a very credible flagship for the combustion part of its Ingolstadt makers range of luxury SUVs. Its remaining lifespan looks inevitably limited. Not too far into the future, your only choice of Audi in this segment will lie with the Ingolstadt makers full EV e-tron models, confusingly also badged Q8. But for now, a small but appealingly well-heeled group of customers unconvinced by large coupe SUVs from BMW and Mercedes will continue to gravitate towards this car. It does still bring customers seduced by this class-conscious category, something a bit different. Turn up to a business meeting in an X6 or a Mercedes GLE coupe and some might dismiss you as a showy extrovert. Arrive in a Q8 and the impact would be a touch more subtle. For some, that will be important, particularly as this Audi is, in its own way, just as stylish and avant-garde as its two main Teutonic arch rivals. If you want one of these, then probably nothing else will do, which is exactly as it should be when it comes to this class of car.